Hello everybody, it's Payan from Niche. Hope you're well. Well, we've seen a gradual decrease in mortgage rates. What's going on there? Why are mortgage rates gradually decreasing? Is there a bigger market trend? Is there a shift in the market? We'll talk about that. I've actually put a compiled a, a loan to value rate by residential so you can see what the rates are at 75%, 80%, 85%, 90% uh, based on a two year, five year and a 10 year and some options with no early repayment charges. So we'll look at that. Granted, they're a few days old guys, so a caveat for that. Um, we've also seen uh, firms go bust. We've seen down valuations in the market. How does that impact the market itself. How does that impact the buying process? Uh, we've looked at uh, some of the uh, consequences of what's happening in the US. We talk about how the US and the inflation figures will impact us uh, in the future, what we think is going to happen in the next year, the type of business that we're writing right now, the type of residential mortgages that we're doing now, why are people buying right now? So we talk about the whole thing. It's a bit of it long. So what I will do is I will put little tabs in there in the description so you can jump into it. So if you want to talk, find out about buy to let, you can go to the buy to let. If you want to talk, find out about down valuations, you can go to the bit. Or if you just want to look at the rates bit, you can do so. So I'll catch you on the video. Take care. Hello everybody, it's Pai, I'm here from Niche. Hope everybody is well. Let's talk about mortgages, the lovely subject of mortgages. It's on everybody's uh, mouth at the moment. Whenever you go, wherever you go, um, everybody wants to know about mortgages. So um, there's been some movement in the market. Um, there's been a gradual decrease in rates across the board in the specialist sector, in the high street sector, as well as the buy to let sector. So what's fueling this uh, slight decrease. I wouldn't say it's major. I don't think it's you know it's going to uh, change the world here. But the reason for that is, I believe, is lenders just need business. Um, they are they are trying to fight for a smaller batch of uh, sort of applications that are coming through, and certainly they've got mouths to feed, they've got staff to feed, they've got overheads, they've got cost, so they're reducing their rates. But it's not a massive amount. Um, so I don't think this is because rates are going to come down. I don't think. It's because they've seen some big signs in the market. I just personally believe that they just need to compete for that business. Um, they can't really, there's not too much they can do from a criteria perspective. So they're going in with rate. Um, generally, it's happening in the lower loan to values. Now, I did do some figures for you and I was supposed to publish it on the 27th of the 8th. So I was supposed to publish it last week and I didn't do the video. But I, but I was looking at some of the uh, rates that are out there, and these are published as of the 27th of the 8th. They're ver variable and tracker and discount and standard rates uh, um, uh, products as well, uh, based on a £300,000 property ranked by the pay rate, so the lowest rate. We've excluded products for new builds, products that are specific uh, for special workers, for example, teachers, professionals, green mortgages. So these are just standard, I suppose, uh, products, and I will probably just put them out there on the on the screen at the moment. So if you look at it, I've done a 95%, 90, 85%, 75%, and 60%. Like I said, these product figures are a week old as of the 27th of the 8th, 2023. And we have seen a gradual uh, even improvement even within that week. So when you look at the two-year variables without early repayment charge, okay, so there's no options at 95%. There's a product out there for 6.35 at 90, 590 at 85, 5.55, 75, and 60% is 5.48. This is for products for people that are essentially thinking, do you know what? I'm coming off a fixed rate mortgage. I think rates are going to go down. I just want to sit tight somewhere for a little while. I can swallow the higher rate. I can swallow the uncertainty. If there is a move in the market and rates go up, I can still swallow that. I can still deal with that. Then you've got the two-year fixed options, again, at the same loan to value, 6.85. So the best two-year fixed option at 95% is 6.85. And we come through right the way um, to 5.90 at 60% loan to value. Uh, I have seen products that are actually decreased from that now. So they should be better. Uh, Five-year fixed, look, 6.17 at 95%, right the way through the 5.34 at 60% loan to value. So, you know, generally when you look at it, lenders have always for the last, I would say, a year have priced the five-year fixed lower 
then the two year options and then there's the 10 10 year options no options at 95 90 85 and a 5.49 at 75 percent and a 5.28 at 60 percent what does that tell us well it tells us lenders don't think rates are going to go down that much that's what it tells us um but lenders thought all sorts of things last year they were pricing four point i think 3.99 on a five-year fixed okay so lenders don't just go by what lenders think because lenders haven't got a clue and certainly the bank of england haven't got a clue they've proven to us um over time that they don't necessarily know what's happening so just because the market is it's doing this uh, it can shift very very quickly um from a personal perspective the clients that i'm getting and my a lot of my existing clients that are coming off their mortgages they are tending to opt for a two-year option whether it's a no early repayment charge option whether we stay with the existing lender or move to another lender or they're tending to go for a no early repayment charge product so they are generally people that have got quite a lot of equity in there they can wait it out and I, like I said, they, they, you know, they can deal with the shifts should it go the other way around. The beauty of a no early repayment charge product out there is if it starts getting really bad, you can opt to go to a fixed rate deal with another lender or maybe the same lender. So there are some um, options around that. However, you are paying a lending fee. So you've just got to bear that in mind. Um, so there has been some movements and these are just residential products and we've seen the same with the buy to let products what i would say is the buy to let sector is in a little bit of trouble because well a lot a lot of trouble because what you will find is although the rates are relatively competitive it's the fees you know we are seeing mainstream buy to let lenders such as bm solutions coming out with products with three thousand nine hundred ninety five pound fee nearly four grand to do a buy to let mortgage for the pleasure of them lending you money and when you go to a more of a specialist lenders it's very common now to get rate uh, fees structures of two percent three percent four percent and five percent so uh, I, I, sometimes i get novices sort of phone me up and going we've seen a wonderful rate on a buy to let um why are you quoting us more and then you go well, actually that product's got a five percent fee so do you really want to pay Fifty-eight thousand pounds lending fee on your whatever the the, the the high mortgage that you've got. So and sometimes they have to because they can't make the rental calculation work. So um, it's it's vital you speak to a mortgage broker because a mortgage broker will have insight and in not just about the fee but also the the fee structures, the the what you're trying to do. Will they lend on that specific property? Um, so there's a lot going on, but that's that's the state in regards from the rate from a business perspective there are still people buying there's still first-time buyers next time buyers people upgrading properties on a residential front why are they doing so there is more stock out there and it's been uh, that discounted whether or not that's it's the right time to buy it's really dependent on the area you're buying from and the type of property you're buying from and whether or not you're in a good position to buy now okay some people don't have the luxury of waiting i've seen I've seen people sort of put out videos out there. Well, yeah, you should wait. You know, we're, we're in the middle of the cycle right now and there's properties are going to reduce. And I sort of agree with that. I still think, you know, the way the market is, you know, you've got all these people that have gone on interest only mortgages, maybe got exceptions. Um, you've got people that have, haven't been affected necessarily. They've been affected by the affordability, but they haven't been affected, for example, with job losses and things like that. And that should come through. I think it will come through as... The recession which they are trying to make don't don't be fooled by this the, the whole point about bank of england raise raising interest rates so swiftly is to make a recession is to cool down the market and cool down uh, the, the the you know cool down everything okay so you know although they come back and you know they, they go there and they put a sorry face on but they know exactly what they're trying to do and they're, what they're trying to do is cause a recession okay and to slow everything down so you just got to be mindful that there is a recession now whether or not we're in it or not there is a recession okay and they want that to happen okay so you know will property prices come down i think in a lot of areas it will do but there are certain areas that you just don't get them i mean i've got clients at the moment they're saying prime get me this agreement principle i need to put the application otherwise this property's gone okay there are areas out there that properties go like that still still in this market so it's just dependent on where you are and whether you've got the luxury of being able to wait it out if you don't then you know there are 
uh, mortgages out there as long as it's affordable for you. Um, the type of deals that we're doing at the moment, uh, certainly on the investment side of things, is people adding value to properties. So buying a property with a short lease, getting the lease extended, um, or um, buying a property, splitting it into a, a different unit or turning it into HMOs. There's a lot of that going on, okay? There's a lot of that going on because your traditional buy-to-let, two-bedroom flat, rental calculation doesn't work anymore so people are looking at different ways of doing things and so that side of things is happening from a um, from a processing perspective i have started seeing down valuations by surveyors okay and that's a sign that the market is really cooling um, so we've got clients that are doing a purchase of a property and let's say they're buying at 300 the surveyors from the lenders are going in and going well actually we don't think it's worth 300 although you're willing to pay for 300 and it's on the market for 300 we think it's only worth 285 okay so in that case what happens is there may be a negotiation done between you and the seller and you may have to put in more deposit to make that deal work because the lender's only willing to give you i don't know 85%, 75%, 90% of the purchase price. So we have started seeing down valuation. That's been the case, a lot of it, for remortgages anyway. So people often think their property is worth more than what it's worth. Okay, and that's just the reality of things, especially if they're investors, especially if they've done a load of work to a property. And they come in and go, oh, it's all day long it's worth 200 and down valuation comes in at 170. So, but we're seeing that on purchases. So, uh, and that's the sign to show that the valuers are a little bit more nervous and they're being more cautious because they don't want cases against them. So, uh, you know, and identifying, so it's always good if you're going with a purchase and you're not quite sure, um, go with a free valuation product because then you've got nothing to lose really. If you come by niche, we don't charge up front. So really, there is nothing to lose from you if you were just trying to see if that property is worth what it's worth and you're going for it and you're not quite sure. Um, there's a lot of that happening in the market and I would envisage more and more of that happening. Solicitor costs have gone up as well, I've noticed. Um, solicitors are trying to make more money out of the deal as their volumes drop. These solicitors, nobody really looks at that, but the lenders, um, volumes have dropped mortgage broker volumes have dropped and we've seen mortgage brokers go bust we saw a large firm last week um went into i, I believe they went into administration but they've stopped taking business so we've started saying there are, i think 20 30 brokers out there i'm going to see a lot more of those type of brokerages that were built on volume they may not have that business or specialist sectors if it's a large loan sector for example if it's something that it's been impacted massively by the interest rates I see them having problems and certainly the conveyancing market has been built up with these large transactions volume base happening and they've dropped so people are trying to earn more money out of their case. What's going to happen to that market is going to be interesting. Certainly what's going to happen to all these brokerages that don't charge fees and cannot make the, the, the volumes work. Um, it will be interesting to see how that market evolves as everybody tries to cut cost. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think, what you found in the market, how you think things are going to progress. I don't think we're going to see an interest rate decrease in the next year. Um, I just can't see it happening. We are seven months behind, I think, America. And America interest rates, looking at week on week, they're very, very stable, around the 7%, 7 and a bit percent on a 15 year and a 30 year. So nothing has really been changed okay and they are seven months ahead certainly from an inflation perspective and i think uh, we're not going to go anywhere until america jumps uh, and i just think we're in we're, we're behind the scale so certainly for the next year i don't see interest rates coming down it's unfortunate because i've got a mortgage coming up as well uh, i've got a buy to let mortgage coming up in march so we'll see how that works out um but you know it's vital you get onto it quite quickly. A lot of the lenders will allow you to, um, well, you can get a remortgage offer for six months. So if your mortgage is running out within the next six months, it's worth you working on it. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't reevaluate things in three months time. Have a look to see what the market price is like. I don't envisage there's going to be much change. I think we may even get another interest rate rise. I don't think we're, we don't quite know what's happening with the Russia thing at the moment. You know, we're going, we're going to go into winter and I think the Russians may turn the gas completely off. And I think that will, um, you know, that will have a massive impact on uh, inflation. So the inflation is a target where, you know, it can move. And we, we are, we have shown in the UK that we are very much susceptible to uh, market volatility. 
Also, what I will say is I've, I've been reading and there's been a lot of uh, accounts in defaults. From a residential perspective, I think accounts in arrears has gone up by around the 24% mark year on year. Interesting enough, landlord defaults have gone up by 120, I think 120 or 130%. So the buy to let landlords are getting screwed here. Not only are they getting screwed from a um, uh, margin perspective, but they're getting screwed from a tax perspective as well. Those of you that are landlords will know about this. Now, there are lots of people who go, good, you know, they've been they've been making money all these years and, and you know, buying properties off the back of first time buyers. And that could, you, there is an argument for that, 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 you know, it needs to be cooled down. But unfortunately, it's going to be a case where the big boys will take over. So I don't envisage, you know, just because the small landlords are going to get out of the market, there's going to be a, a short, you know, the end of the landlord. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this market update. Uh, as I said, apologies. These are the, the figures that I've given you a little bit out of date. It's just me being really busy and not being able to do the video in time. Um, I'll catch you on the next one. Let me know what you think. If you've got any questions, do leave the comments below and I'll try to come back to you. Take care. All the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.